And this statement, <clears throat> the way I recited it right there, is called tahqiq. There's different ways of reciting. Four different ways of reciting, to be exact. The one that you do in class, when you're learning tajweed, is called tahqiq. Tartil is a little bit different. I don't want to get into it right now because it's not the subject of today's lesson. But one of the rules that I want everyone to learn first day out is that we start with the, ta the, the, the istiada. We start with saying, A'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajim. However, in order to do that, you have to do it in one breath. There is no breathing in between the recitation. Okay? So you can't say, A'udhu billahi mina. You hear that? Or, A'udhu billahi mina shaytan. You hear that? That's all incorrect. It has to come. A'udhu billahi mina shaytan rajim. You understand? One breath. And that's how we're going to practice it. So get over your shyness because this is something that's going to keep you. During this class, we will, you will be called to recite. And you have to recite in a clear voice that is loud to be you know, intelligible. Mumbling does not count. Okay? Now, <clears throat> 10 fundamentals. Before we can jump right into recitation, we have to learn these 10 fundamentals. Let's go down. Someone scroll for me, please. Could you scroll down, please? <clears throat> okay. That's a little bit too much. Okay. Why don't I get somebody else to scroll down? Okay, here we go. Good enough, right there. Let's stop right there. Shukran I'm just messing with you, Mirsad. It says, the basics of every science are ten. That means there are ten things, fundamental things, basic things that everybody must know before you start studying this subject. They're simple, common sense things. The first and the second is the definition and name of the subject that you're studying. Third and fourth are what so what, what is the subject matter? What subject is it? No, that's, that's the typo. What is the subject matter? Okay? The next one, and what is the benefit of that subject? What is its nobility next to other sciences? What sciences or subjects is it related to? Who started it and what tools must we use? Because there are some prerequisites that you use. In every science that you deal with, there are, you, know, you have your, your hammer and your nail. These are tools that you use in building, right? Who started and what tools were we through? What issues does it deal with? And what is the legal ruling regarding it? So let's deal with those questions right off the bat. And we'll have a quiz at the end of the class, OK? Roll down again, please, ma'am. The first and second. OK. OK, the first and second is the, the definition and name. Tajweed. Tajweed is the name. Tajweed is from the word jawada, meaning to perfect something, to do something in a beautiful manner without losing its technical properties. What does that mean? Okay, first, this is said regarding speech and actions. This is the linguistic meaning. The Arabs, when they said something was jayid or something you did some tajweedan, they didn't necessarily originally mean by that qira'at al-Qur'an, recitation of the Qur'an. But this was something like in the Chinese language, they say good kung fu, right? They say good kung fu. And kung fu didn't mean fighting. Kung fu meant that whatever you did, you did it good. Whether it was cooking, whether it was architecture, whatever you did, good kung fu. You perfected it. You didn't lose nothing. And in fact, you did it in such a beautiful, artistic manner. This is the original meaning of Tajweed, and it still plays a large role in what we, what we mean when we say Tajweed. As a term, Tajweed is to give the proper recitation. I'm giving you a general because this is a beginner's class. The proper recitation of the Qur'an. What does that mean? That means 
The smallest part of the Qur'an is what? The letters. The harf. So that is for you to recite each letter. Each harakah, harf. Letter and, and, what do you call it, vowel. The way it's supposed to. And if you paid attention to that, then that would make the words sound perfect. And not just to do that, then to beautify that. To beautify your presentation of that recitation. Does that make sense? That is tajweed. And the study of tajweed is to get you to do that naturally. Without a whole bunch of mukallafun, without a whole bunch of, you know, sina'a. What is that? You know, people that, that they go too far with it and it's, and it's, it's, it's plastic, it's artificial. Okay? It's, it's, instead of being crafted, it's more of a production with a, a, a factorization, like a factory. Okay? And we don't want that. We want a, a performance, a presentation, a beautiful presentation. And that's done through constant work. Okay? Go on down, please. And I don't mean to beleaguer the points. The second, the third, and fourth are what is its subject matter and what is its benefit? What is the subject matter of tajweed? Its subject matter are the words of the Quran with regards to perfecting their pronunciation and beautifying their presentation. This is what the subject matter is. When we talk about the subject matter, what are we dealing with? When we deal with Quran, when we deal with tajweed, we're dealing with literally just the words in the Quran. That's what, the sub, that's what we're going to be attacking, what we're going after, what we're going to be analyzing, what we're going to be reciting, the words of the Qur'an. So we don't have to go look for this and that. The Qur'an is here. We can look at it, but now we're going to look at it with an eye to what? Perfecting their pronunciation, the pronunciation of those words, and beautifying our presentation of those words. This is what we're going to be doing here, inshallah. Some of the benefits. What's the benefit of learning tajweed? Some of its benefits are that it protects the speech of Allah from being recited incorrectly. Let's stop for that for a, sec for a second. What is the Qur'an? The Qur'an is the speech of Allah and it's not created. Right? This is the speech of Allah. So, for us to recite the Qur'an the way that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the Qur'an, we know the letters and the words are all preserved in written form. And it's preserved in the chests of men. How are we going to extract that? We extract that from listening to it and reciting it the way the Prophet ﷺ recited it. So we get to recite and protect the recitation the way it was recited by the Prophet ﷺ or by the way he allowed his companions to recite it. Right? This is one of the benefits. So you recite wahyi, you're reciting revelation from Allah the way it was revealed without taking away from anything and without giving something that doesn't belong there. Okay, so that's one of the benefits. It protects the speech of Allah from being recited incorrectly. So the benefit of this science is that it clarifies to the student how the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself used to recite the Qur'an and allow it to be recited by his companions for this reason, it is considered to be one of the sciences of tafsir. Why is it considered? How could tajweed be considered a science of tajweed, of, of tafsir? What is tafsir? Tafsir is the science through which we recognize and understand what the Quran means. When you recite the words correctly, you've broken them up. So now we know that this was an as opposed to an. That's some clarification, tibyan, you know? It clarifies what is actually there. Knowing the words is the first thing you need to know in a tafsir. So hearing them recited correctly is considered one of the first forms and levels of tafsir. Do you understand that? Okay. Let's go on. If I have any questions, stop me at that point if you don't understand the point. Because I'm going to ask you this. Someone's going to come to you maybe and say, you're studying tajweed? What is tajweed? What's the benefit of studying tajweed? And you don't have to make it up. You don't have to think all oh, whole deeply about it. You've got the answers. So if you don't understand them, I and there are more to this than that, but this is basic. Don't try to, to be, you know, over eloquent 
and talk in manners that you know are beyond the subject. Deal with it real basic, real basic, and then we move on.